Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm bringing you this special painting tutorial and demonstration in honor of my mama. My mama's name is June, so is my middle name, and she passed away a year ago this month, the month of May. And I'm going to go stay with my dad for the anniversary of that date, which is May 15th. And I just wanted to share this painting that I created pretty shortly after she passed away. I was at their beautiful property staying with my dad. And, and you know, even in the midst of the grieving, I could feel her presence in their beautiful property that she just loved so much. She was actually quite the photographer herself. But you can see, this place is like a piece of heaven. And I am so grateful that I have the hope of heaven and seeing my beautiful mama again. Right after she passed away, I came to this beautiful field in front of her house and I snapped these photos and the birds were singing and the sun was radiant and I just could feel her with me. I decided to try and paint this scene and I had brought some art supplies with me when I had stayed with my dad last year around this time for about three months and all those paintings this is their beautiful basement I created while I was there and as I always say art is truly healing right so I am going to provide a bit of a tutorial here for you explaining some of my products and techniques and again this is in honor of my mom so here we go. I used a surface I had never used before, Lux Archival. I'll talk more about it as I paint. I also used this set of Arteza pastels. It's 72 pastels, and they had asked me to do a little product review. It is two sections within the box. They have some really bright colors in one of the little trays that they have, and I decided it might be a good idea to try these as an underpainting. The reason being is because they're a little harder. I would say more equivalent to a Rembrandt pastel and I decided to do a wet underpainting. The Lux archival surface is water friendly and I thought because these are harder pastels it might be fun. I grabbed two of the largest brushes I had with me. One was my Chinese watercolor brush and just another flat brush. Now I had brought my little spritzer bottle of alcohol. I like to use alcohol to wet pastels. You can also use water. Alcohol dries faster and I believe it makes the pastels behave a little differently. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you know I like to do underpaintings, especially when I'm working on a surface. Lux Archival is kind of white as compared to UART or uh, the paper I use often, Fisher 400, which is almost just like UART. These are sanded surfaces. And while you can buy a lot of surfaces that have a tone already to them, they might be a, a nice blue or burgundy or beige, um, papers like this, especially Lux Archival being white, it's a good idea to get down some color, to block in large shapes, or either just to tone it all one color. So I decided to use, this is just a darker uh, new pastel that I had. It's a harder dark pastel that's made by Prismacolor. So I got in my darkest darks. Now I just broke one of the dark Arteza pastels that's, I'd say the color is similar to the eggplant color of Terry Ludwig. Now this one's kind of a dark bluish, um, almost leaning a little towards lavender or purple. It's really pretty. So what am I doing and why am I doing this? Well, I talk a lot in my videos about underpaintings, but I like to get in my big shapes and my values and some fun color to lay down underneath. So I decided to go ahead because the grass is green and get some pretty underlying tones. Often I'll do a warm color as an underpainting that it would be a complement to the greens. Often in landscapes there are so many greens. I decided to go ahead and use some local color in the sky. Local color just means the color that's natural to the scene. So I got in a little bit of blue and um, so I'm just kind of working in these big shapes and then when I add the water it's going to make it very dreamy and impressionistic. And here I am adding a little bit of this red to even warm it up more. I know the sun's shining on this field so I thought that might be nice. Now what am I doing? I decided I'd never done this before. I thought you know if I've got my spritzer bottle and I'm going to be wetting these uh, pastels that are already down. Let me use gravity to my advantage. I got my sky in first 
and then I sprayed these trees. Now look at that. Isn't that a neat technique? I've got to remember that. I thought it was really fun. Of course, the trees won't be dripping that up into the sky. When I'm finished, I'll carve in my sky shapes. But I thought it just made such a neat impressionistic feel. So I'm doing the same thing. You may have noticed that I switched rather quickly from my Chinese brush to my regular flat brush. The reason was because it was catching on the sanded surface. Now this is just a little, um, kind of like a soft sponge uh, tool that I was using to kind of scrub in some of the pastels I had laid down. And the reason I did that is I wanted some large strokes. Those grasses in the foreground were um, kind of large and wide strokes, and it worked better than just using the brush that was not quite able to get that effect. Now, what is this? Oh my goodness, this was a set of Schmincke pastels. It's a 120 half stick set. I apologize, this set, to my knowledge, is not available anymore. I don't know if they'll bring it back. I bought this set from Dakota Pastels, obviously over a year ago, but I, I'll go ahead and let you know, they worked beautifully on this Lux Archival. Now I'm just reinforcing my darks here. I used that little Prismacolor New Pastel. If you don't know what they are, they're kind of long rectangular pastels that are, they lean more towards the harder pastels in the soft pastel lineup, if that makes sense. And I wanted to get in, almost always trees are your darkest element and they gradually get lighter as they move into the distance. But I often like to get in almost like a little trail underneath all of the grasses. Now this is just a paper towel. You see how, you know, you can use so many different tools and elements to blend with. And I always encourage, uh, explore, have fun. I am certainly always experimenting, maybe too much. <laughs> I wanted to bring that tree line down a little further there. And um, now I'm starting with the Schmincke pastels. See how now, even though the trees dripped up into the sky, this is what's called negative painting. It's carving in the sky into the trees. And another term for this is called sky holes. It's when the sky, literally, you put it behind the tree, you carve it into it. Instead of drawing each branch or making the shapes around the sky, you work negatively. You carve the sky into the tree line. And it results in a much more painterly and impressionistic feel. Now notice I got in some of my darker cloud shapes first with kind of like a neutral um, taupe lavender color and then I gradually start working in all of these beautiful colors in the sky around it. I do apologize I'm speeding this video up because I am going to be leaving in just a day or so to go be with my dad for this one year anniversary of my mom's passing and, and some of my other family members. Um, I've got a lot to catch up on, but I really wanted to share this video before I left. Um, so you can see I'm just, those. by the way, every time you see me use the paper towel, I use a clean section. I don't want to contaminate. If I blend from the trees, I don't want to take it up into the sky to blend. So you can see, you know, how this works quite well. And this Lux Archival paper takes a lot of layering. It's a wonderful surface and um, it was, again, this was really good for me. I, again, I didn't know if I would even be able to paint, but it's just like I always preach. Art is healing and it really does get your mind to a place that is peaceful. And I also play uh, most often when I play music, I play praise and worship music. And I tell you, my painting experience is an act of worship and praise. And sometimes in my videos, I have to actually cut out <laughs> me raising my hands or just praising the Lord while I'm painting because it it is more than the physical product. It's it's a, it's a worship experience for me. <laughs> so I'm just working in some colors to give that effect of the distant tree line. And the field was um, very beautifully green. It had a really pretty green tone to it. Um, still, you notice too how I'm trying to work the whole painting. I worked on the sky a bit, then I came and worked to the trees, then I started on the field, then I went back to work on the sky. I'll come down to the field a little bit more pretty soon. But I find when I work the whole... It keeps the painting very painterly and loose, and it makes my values more accurate. If you have you ever done this, you get stuck on one little part of your painting and you work it and you work it and you work it. Well, first of all, you're going to muddy those pastels, the color will become dull. Then, when you move on to the rest of your painting, 
somehow the values don't really gel. They they are disconnected and it doesn't feel real like what it was in the moment or in that uh, uh, or in your reference photo. Um, so pardon my big head that got in the way a lot here, um, but hopefully you can still see. So I do apologize for the sped up version of this, but hopefully you can still follow it. I will include the reference image if you're a patron of mine. And I am so grateful for my Patreon support after my mama's passing. Not only, you know, was, was that just so hard on my life to even be able to, to work, but I had lost my other business due to COVID. So the people who have supported me on, I had a bookkeeping business that was affiliated with the school systems. And um, so I lost that business. I lost my mama and we, my husband and I, we lost his mama that was living with us with terminal cancer. So all of that, not to be negative, but to say thank you to my patrons. You are what kept me going. My husband and I both, he lost his job due to COVID, but you kept us going during a very dark and hard time in our lives. So I am very grateful. So my patrons will be getting the reference image to this and um, perhaps some extra information in their Patreon post of this particular painting. So you can see this has a very soft feel. And again, the Lux Archival paper was so nice and textured, but it has a really smooth texture. And I can't believe I haven't used it again. I don't think I have but I definitely need to break it out and create another painting with this wonderful surface. And now, again, <laughs> with me speeding it up, my head turning back and forth, back and forth. There was no way to really crop out my old face there. So, hey, it is what it is, right? But pay attention to the painting. What was that? Anybody remember The Wizard of Oz? Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. So just watch what I'm painting. And I'm actually going to add some music here. <clears throat> my daughter-in-law, my beautiful beautiful daughter-in-law Chelsea. She is such a precious soul and she wrote a poem for my mama called Fields of June. And if you knew my mom, you would understand how perfect that title is, but wait till you hear the poem. My mom was just one of those people who just connected with nature. And she knew so much about plants and farming and she came from an era um, in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, where that's what they did. If you wanted to eat, you better plant and have a garden. And she had so many talents and so many gifts. And so Fields of June and this poem it just so perfectly represents her. And it's really what inspired this painting. I I had taken these pictures already, and then when my daughter-in-law shared the poem, I just knew I had to paint this particular painting. So I'm going to play some music and read this poem for you. It's not one of those poems that rhymes, but it's more of a story poem. And then I'll continue to play the music for the remainder of the tutorial, except for the end. I will be back. I've got some things I want to share at the end. So enjoy, and I'll be back soon. Fields of June The sun seems to shine brighter now. Everything has new meaning. Whenever I want to see you again, I close my eyes and see fields of June. A flower is more than a flower now, and anything that flies is your spirit. Seeing the reflection of the moon in a lake, I return to the place called Fields of June. Wind on my skin is filled with power now. Breezy days bring joy. Sitting between the sycamore trees, I talk to you in fields of June. I see the sun coming up in the distance. Good to see you again this morning. I want to feel your touch again, so I hold your grandson in fields of June. Cracking an egg puts a smile on my face. You are good at that. No doubt, you're everywhere. We live in fields of June.
I hope that song wasn't too sad, but it's one of my favorite songs. It's called Adagio for Strings. And I heard it the first time in a movie. If you haven't seen this movie, it's a black and white movie, even though it's, I mean, it's old, but it's not so old that it would be black and white. It was called The Elephant Man. I believe Anthony Hopkins is in it. And I wanted to jump back in at this point because those flowers peeking up over the horizon line into the sky were the obvious focal point. Now, when you put anything up in a light area like the sky, you want to make sure you get down something dark first. Otherwise, if you just add, you know, the flowers in your mind, they're white, but actually they're in shadow because the sun is on the opposite side of them. So you want to make sure you give them enough contrast. Now, the flowers that are in the field, the ones I'm doing now, um, just adding some light color, they're really going to show up because they're on a darker background. And you saw what I just did. I don't want to make them all little dots because some of them were groupings of flowers. And when you have groupings real far away, you almost can lay down a little light blanket, little horizontal bands that will emulate groupings of flowers in the distance. And so now I'm just beginning to work some of the grasses. Notice I still have that large dark area in the foreground. Maybe that kind of makes sense now as to why I laid down that underpainting with those broad dark um, uh, broad strokes with darker pastels. And it's because I had the forethought that I'll be gently laying down some grasses. I want it to be very impressionistic and painterly. And I say this often in my videos, I get to watch the video after I've painted it. And often I like a stage, kind of like this stage, before completing it. But I did work on it a bit more and, and I really enjoyed the process. So I was happy with the final, but I added more greenery to the foreground, more flowers. I uh, brightened it up a bit. So I hope you like it. And I hope you not only like the tutorial, but my dedication to my mama blessed you, and especially that beautiful poem from my daughter-in-law. So mama, I know you love to cook, and I think you're just getting the wedding supper of the lamb prepared for us before that great and glorious day that we're together again.